This shirt is burning my eyes. Uh, it's so bright. You know what? It's a badass shirt, all right? Dewey loves it, don't you? Uh, what we want to talk about in today's video, so not much of a vlog today, um, but just talking about how we've gotten over like alcohol and drugs and Adderall and cigarettes and well Hannah's cigarettes I haven't been on Adderall but drugs and alcohol I haven't for been me on drugs. Like, well I haven't... you've been on prescribed drugs yeah but I never did like MDMA and ecstasy and acid like you did I never did acid Dewey, do you want to talk about how you overcame your drug addiction? Uh, Dewey's drug addiction is still kissing. Um, He's still a pretty big addict. So when I first started eating a plant-based diet is, uh, is when I first started thinking about getting, like stopping drinking and doing drugs and all that kind of stuff because it obviously it doesn't really fit in with a healthy lifestyle. Me too. Um, especially like with the food and stuff. I did the same thing, kind of. <laughs> Where are you going with that? <laughs> like I, when I first started eating plant-based is when yeah. I started really cutting back on stuff. Like I quit Adderall at that point. I quit smoking and drinking and I would have like bouts of going back to them, but mm -hmm. it was very short, like a day or two. So yeah, I think when I first transitioned to a plant-based diet is I was doing, like I was trying to do the 100% raw diet back in the day and as we all did. You can drink or do drugs or smoke cigarettes or take Adderall or drink caffeine or mm -hmm. eat cooked food or do anything, you know? Yeah, so there's like a period where like I totally cut that stuff out and then I basically came to the grips of doing it again because I basically changed my diet back to kind of like how I was eating before, like eating a standard American diet. So I was like 100% vegan for a bit, then I went eat back to eating animal-based products. Um, this was like after I got like fired from my first one of my jobs and stuff and it was a shitty situation and so I went back to it and then consequently I also went back to like drinking and like doing drugs and stuff and gained a whole bunch of weight so I was probably about 25 pounds heavier than I am now. For me eventually how I got off of it was I had to like move across the country. <laughs> like you don't have to do that but I found it easier because a lot of us we're really influenced by our social circle. Yeah. Um, with regards to like drinking and drugs and cigarettes and even just like your house. Like if you've always come home, like for me, I always came home and like would drink a bottle of wine after work and sit in my garage and smoke. Like it was a huge like. <laughs> That's what you did. <laughs> yeah. It was like a huge like shift for me when I quit because I would sit in the same place where I would smoke, like right outside my garage door, the door to my garage and the kitchen. Like I would sit on the little ledge there and I would smoke, but that's where I started to put on my cycling shoes. So it was like mm -hmm. a big shift for me. I did make pretty drastic changes to get off all that stuff, but I think it's just a shift to like wanting to be healthy and deciding that you're gonna like be healthy. I definitely think with Adderall and cigarettes, I could tell myself like I'm never gonna do that again and be fine with it. But telling myself like that I'm never ever ever gonna drink again was like hard so like even to this day I don't say like well I'm never ever ever gonna drink again or like not allow it because then it just turns into like a binge for me like if something happened like if I got in a really big fight with like Derek or something and we split up for like I would probably go binge drink and smoke and like that's just that would be the way that I know how to cope with stuff you know so like I think in the place that I'm now I wouldn't do that but in the past I would yeah so I definitely think an important an important part of like if you do have a strong addiction like what we learn on watching intervention is that you need to learn how to cope with negative emotions and with pain in your life. Yeah. And most people use drugs and alcohol and other types of uh, prescription drugs as a way to self-medicate themselves as mm -hmm. opposed to actually dealing with what's going on in their life. Yeah. So I'm sure there's like books on it, you could talk to counselors. Yeah. Um, there's lots of different resources. So definitely learning how to deal with those emotions has got to be one of the most important things yeah. um, if you're looking to, to get over um, like an addiction to that type of stuff. If that's the reason that you're like addicted to something as well, like some people genuinely just think that that's how that the only way that they can have fun. I genuinely thought that like cigarettes helped me. 
I genuinely thought like Adderall helped me and I couldn't function without it. So like, I think separating yourself from that fact, like once I realized that cigarettes were ruining my life and like I could, you know, do things without them and be success, like I never thought that I'd be able to lose weight if I quit smoking, like ever, because it's just this huge myth. But I honestly didn't start really losing weight until I quit smoking. So but I think some <laughs> But I think some people genuinely do think that like having a glass of wine at night helps them fall asleep or like helps them self-medicate from like stress or like it's helping them in some way and it's not helping you. Like that's the thing that you have to realize that it really is a drug and it's not helping you. And the fact that you think that it's helping you is just proving how addictive it really is. Because yeah. cigarettes are not helping anyone. Like Adderall, it's not helping people. It's their diet that's really like screwed up, you know? Like I was on Adderall for like three or four years. I couldn't do anything in my life before I took Adderall. Like I couldn't. I was so all over the place, like I couldn't stick to anything, I couldn't clean my house, like my life was like a mess. Over time I like convinced myself that I needed like to take Adderall and then when I started taking it, everything got worse. I smoked more, I never ate, like I would have a really clean house and I'd get a shitload of stuff done at work but it was ruining like my brain, literally. And when you get off of it, it's terrible because you sleep for like days, you think you can't function without it but it's literally methamphetamine in a legal prescribed dose that's what it is if you think that anything is helping you other than you know like a medication for a chronic illness did we just fart? did we just fart it that was gross <laughs> like it's not like cigarettes aren't helping you alcohol is not helping you it's yeah. not adding anything to your life there's a book by alan carr called um how to quit drinking forever i don't that's not what it's called there's one by him about smoking and drinking and you should really read them if you're having problems with it because it's like mm -hmm. eye-opening it's like shedding all the truth on what it's really doing to you mentally not just physically because people hear like well you're gonna get lung cancer and you're gonna die and that doesn't stop people but once you realize how like mind you are by all of it then you start to realize that it's really not helping you and you can really get away from it and then there's um i would say another kind of like classification is people who do it socially so like i know like for example like my friends um, back home it's more of like a social thing right and I guess what like what it kind of came down to for me was like do I want to keep hanging around these people not that they're bad people yeah. you know are these the healthy kind of like inspiring people that I want to be surrounding myself with or do I want to find uh, new friends that support healthy lifestyle habits and so yeah. for me um, moving out of London was a good step for me in that direction and you know, I, I definitely think that that's a really important part as well. So if you're always constantly around people that will trigger you to drink, like friends and family, then getting away from that, even moving cities if you have to, or moving houses, or you know, doing whatever you kind of need to do to get yourself out of those trigger areas, I think is really important. Yeah, or surrounding yourself with like more like-minded people, like going on vegan groups and stuff like that, which there are a lot of vegans that, you know, drink and party mm -hmm. and do drugs and stuff, but it's like that saying, like, you're never gonna fly like an eagle if you're hanging around a bunch of turkeys. Like, you need to surround yourself with people that you want to be like, because those are, that's what's gonna happen, is the people yeah. that you surround yourself with is what you're gonna manifest into your life. So if you're hanging around a bunch of alcoholics and people that, you know, aren't doing very well in their life, or something you would aspire to be, then you should really find some new friends. <laughs> yeah, like if if you live in the middle of bum f nowhere and everyone is like country folk, I don't, I don't have anything against country folk, but people are here like all into like their trucks and four wheeling and and you know driving their trucks through the mud and like drinking beers all day long and like shooting shit and like yeah. if you're in that type of situation, honestly think like, all right, maybe I want to move to a better place. Yeah. Like maybe you want to move to a place in California or in the Pacific Northwest or a place where like there's obviously going to be a lot of like-minded people mm -hmm. um, so that you can live a much healthier and more kind of like awesome life I would say. Yeah and I don't think like some people think that moving is such a huge thing but honestly it's not like once you move it's like whatever. Yeah. You can just start your life. I think it's one of the biggest things that kind of helped me. It's like starting your life over. You get to like write this whole new chapter and you don't have anything hanging, like holding you back. Yeah. 
you know. And you can't start making it, like you can't use like excuses from where you used to live. So you can't yeah. be like, well, like, you know what I mean? Like you just can't be, you can't, if you're drinking in a new area and you weren't, and you're drinking in a previous area, it's definitely, it's not the locations that is causing you to drink. It's, it's essentially yeah. you, so. And I mean, even like with my friends, when I went vegan two and a half years ago or whatever, like, I don't, I didn't have that many friends, but also like when I hung out with them, I was just like, all we did was what we used to do, you know? And it was really hard because it was like, I didn't want to drink and I didn't want to do stuff like that they normally do so it's like you have you feel like you have nothing in common with them like you don't eat the same foods all they want to go do is like drink and party and it's like you'd rather go ride your bike or cook a like bunch of vegan food and have an awesome meal or have a conversation about something or something more intellectual and it's just the same old shit you know like drinking and bickering and gossiping and gossiping and negativity and, and for guys it's like oh yeah I like bang this chick last week and like it was amazing man like totally stereotypical but that's yeah. what we do so if you want to change your life you have to make a change and if you're gonna change and you're gonna like move somewhere you, have, you can't do the same things that you were doing in your previous location like you can't move to San Diego and just start drinking every night and like hanging out with the same types of people like just find a new path it's kind of like you've carved this like deep path your whole life in your ways and your habits and the way that you are and it's like you have to start you know you have to go off into the woods where there is no path and start carving a new one and it's gonna take time and you're probably gonna you know have relapses like I relapsed on cigarettes and alcohol and I even went back to Adderall at one point for like a month and like every time you do it, you're gonna realize how shitty you feel and how bad it sucks and stuff like that. And I like maybe you can be one of those people where you have a beer like every couple months or you can control it or something like that. And that's your decision. But like getting out of those bad habits that you really wanna quit, like you just have to push forward and not look back and just say, this is what I wanna do and I don't wanna have this in my life anymore and replace those bad habits with good habits and just push forward because you're gonna have times when it sucks you're gonna have shit happen in your life where you want to like drown yourself in a bottle of wine and like cry and you know go out and party or just do whatever or something happens with your significant other and like you know like shit like that's gonna happen but you just have to keep pushing forward and not relying on old habits and things to numb your feelings when you should really just be you know meditating and like thinking about what happened and working through it <laughs> working through it in a yeah. different new way yeah and that's how you're gonna like get over stuff like that cool awesome i hope that helps and uh if you have any more questions or comments about um drugs drugs maybe. and alcohol and addiction and stuff then definitely leave it in the box below we'll talk to you soon peace, peace.